Hey, you my old railroad YouTube foamers. How is everybody doing this fine day before Thanksgiving 2019? Just got through watching Sparky and I'm thinking, hey, I'll just throw me a little quick thing here. I'm going to groove me a little bit of thinking about talking about and griping about some copper stuff. You know, it's not like everybody else hadn't done it. So why can't I do that too? I'm thinking, hey, we even had Captain Wilmer come out there. Captain Wilmer, I mean, you know, if you've seen that video, that's pretty slick. That was, I like to spit Dr. Pepper all over my screen when I was watching that. That was just hilarious. I thought it was. Anyway, I'm going to sit there and talk about some cope, and I'm thinking about some things that's going on with that, and I'm thinking about I'm wanting to talk about that. You know, now that I sit here and think about it, I don't want to talk about no stupid cup. I'm going to talk about some train junk, just stupid babbling about my train stuff. That's what I'm going to do tonight, just because what I feel like doing. I don't feel like talking about no copper. And besides, my dog told me I don't need to be talking about that anyway. He's tired of hearing about it. Because he gets stuck listening to the same yap, yap, yap on the TV when I'm watching. I'm like, how many videos can you watch about the same dumb thing? Get 10,000 different answers. I don't know. But anyway, with this copper thing and some stuff I've been going around the house, I was... Went to a train show a while back in Gulfport, Mississippi, and I did happen to meet a fellow YouTuber there. He's a pretty nice guy. You know him as Brian Jones. He has the DNRGW Iron Horse Fruit channel. Pretty good guy. You have to check him out. If you haven't checked the channel, I'll go check that out. It's a pretty nice guy to sit around and talk to and go to a train show with you. But don't expect this guy to keep you from blowing your money because he's in looking and digging in boxes just like I was. And I did get some pretty good. And be honest with you, I blew more than $200 that day, I'm pretty sure. But I was going to go back and get another video to add to some videos that I had. I'm going to create a vid, put a video to kind of discuss that. One thing I would like to ask of you guys that's been doing this, do you have any recommendations, let's say, for some types of microphones or brands or models of microphones that I can hook in my laptop and do some voiceovers on some videos? That would be pretty good. I don't like the one that's in my computer. It just doesn't do right. I'd like maybe something that I can plug in the computer, maybe plug on a camera or something just just some, throwing it into some comments or something under this because i might not be the only one that's dumb about that kind of thing now electronics computers i'm pretty much into but i have really the audio visual stuff not so much if it operates a machine or something i can kind of i kind of get into that but like i said went to the train show spent some money i'm gonna show you what i had here shortly of course i got a cat in here that's bugging me i don't know what she wants but she's seeing me do something and she thinks she's a dog. She follows me everywhere. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to show you some stuff that I got at the train show. Here we go with a few little finds I made at that train show digging through some boxes with Mr. Brian Jones. Got me a nice Atlas DCC ready GP38-2 and some Clinchfield paint. Goes right along with some of my. Louisville and Nashville and Seaboard Coastline and Family Line stuff. If you follow L and N Clinchville kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. When I was digging around in the table, I found this nice little wood chip car. This thing is one of those blue. This is one of the uh, Blueford shop models, I believe. Really nice little thing. Ended up getting that there too. The train show. Um, one thing I didn't realize when I was messing around with the trucks, trying to do something with the trucks and the coupler. I broke off a couple of airlines that come on those, which look pretty slick, but in a scale that's on the layout, you're not going to see them anyway. Well, let's see here. Well, I was going to try to open that, but it's a little bit trouble doing it one-handed. Here's a Blueford Shops uh, transfer caboose that I picked up, too. That's as well. Now, after I bought this thing, I needed a coder. So I had to go to another vendor to get a coder. And then I went to that vendor. Looking at some stuff, got that decoder, and I ended up with this thing. Yeah, I ended up getting one of those. I needed that for some wireless control, talking on my phone. You know, that would be pretty quick. The bigger my layout is, I'm not going to have a whole lot of people. And no more than it can handle, that'll be just fine for me. And I had picked up that, and I think I picked up a patch cord, too, when I was over there. Then I found this little jewel. It's actually a Caterpillar excavator. Pretty nice little thing, make a nice little flat car load. It does move, though, by the way. You can kind of pose it and stuff, and it is pretty good. I don't know that it's a late 1970s, early 80s kind of paint scheme, but, hey, it looks pretty good for me. I'm going to keep that. It's actually a 1 to 160 brand thing. It's not like one of those little toys you buy at Walmart or something. It looks kind of close to it. When you get to looking at it, yep, it's actually a scale model. So, with that being said, like I said, I spent about 200 bucks or so, or actually a little more, when I was at the train show. What made that even worse 
a few days earlier, I was on the internet, modeltrainsoft.com, and ordered me some of these. You get that stitch way right with me and a goober. Nice roof details, air conditioners, and all kind of little things. Be real nice thing to have that little detail to some of my industrial buildings and other buildings. And I had ordered this bad boy too. It's kind of mix up maybe a little bit with my paper mill. Not real sure. It may do its own thing, but I think I'm going to use one of these parts. Kind of make the paper mill look a little bit more industrial. And then I ordered. I ended up getting one of these too. These are pretty simple little buildings. Uh, I'm probably going to do, the next video I'm probably going to do is kind of constructing this little thing. It's not that hard, but I'm going to do a little modification. I'm not going to put as many doors. Most of the doors are going to be on the ends where a wood chip car can perhaps go in there and be emptied while it's in there, let's say. And maybe the little outcrop building there will have all the windows and stuff in like a normal old office building. But I won't have all the doors on the side of this this thing because it'll be part of my paper mill. And the real cool thing is, I'm going to pick this little dude up, is a Blueford Shops Bay Window Caboose that has just come out in LNN paint. Now, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to have to do a video on this thing, because this thing's sweet, I'm telling you. If you see some of those in your road and you would like to have one, they worth the 30 bucks or so that they cost. Really nice little thing. Rolls really good, all that kind of stuff. Really nice deal. Now, like I said, I'd spend some money on these things, you know, in that week or two, so... Oh, well, it is what it is. It's a good thing I'm single, live by myself, I suppose. Got a good job, whatever. All right, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story about my stupid dog here in a minute. All right. Okay, now I'm going to tell you, like I said, I'm going to tell you about a dog. And one of the comments that I have, now I usually have my comments where I can review them before then. For some reason, it took me a little bit of time. Sorry, guys, to get in there. But Sparky said, hey, I like story too, because I didn't make a mention. I was going to tell some, I couldn't tell some stories. Now, one of the things is I feel kind of odd about talking on a, to my phone, to a camera. Now, I am a member of a Toastmasters International Club, and I do a lot of public, I can do public speaking, and I have a lot of fun. I'm kind of funny, and I can be serious and all that. One thing is my job does require me to do presentations for some five officials in the government and some different things in the company, and that kind of comes in handy. Now, anyway, I'm going to get back to my dog. Now, I broke my dog from peeing and pooping in the house. He hadn't peed and pooped in the house probably in 13 years. Now, he's about a 15-year-old dog now. Give or take. Now, I had this dog, and I told him one day, you pooper, you pee on my floor one more time, I'm going to have your manhood cut off. Of course, he didn't know I was going to do that anyway. You know, don't need to make more dogs. <laughs> Not goofy as that one was. I got another story I'm going to tell right behind this. Kind of interesting. But anyway, lo and behold, what he did, he a puppy would do, he done his business in the house. Well, guess what? Next day was his appointment at a Mr. Vet. He went to the vet, woke up, and his family jewels were gone. He took me serious. He never done that again. He said, that old dude is not playing. Here's another story. Actually, that wasn't a real story. That's not true. I just made that up. But it sounds good, doesn't it? Anyway, the real story about this dog, he's probably older than 15 years old now. I kind of got him from my ex-wife or whatever because right after we got divorced, I moved to San Diego. Of course, I've moved back to South Mississippi. Sometimes I'm wondering, hey, why not that? Well, I found his fixer up for house for $40,000. Where are you going to do that at in California? You're not going to do it. It's a nice little house. Sit on the market for a while. I said, hey, I'll give you this much for it. If you want out of it, poor guy one day at rental house, gone. Boom. I come in, ripped all the carpet out of it, do, 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 all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> right now, I got some problems in the bathroom. I got to change some floors out, got wet, whatever. <sighs> anyway, not a big deal. It won't be that hard. I got the skills. And I won't do no videos of it because I'm not doing no already videos because there's no telling what you love to hear me say doing that. I can't. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to tell you about my dog. My ex-wife at the time and my daughter, she said, we're going to get a dog. We had these terriers and chihuahua kind of dogs. Yeah, little, they make a lot of noise. She said, I want my dog, you know, protecting kind of dog for me and the kids, whatever, whatever, you're at work. So, I come home from working, and they had been to the SPCA down in Gulfport, Mississippi, and got this yellow lab mix dog. Right? He's a little yellow lab, a little bit of golden retriever, a little bit, I don't know what, but 
looking at him, he looks pretty much like a yellow lab. Well, I always liked labs. I've had labs in the past, and they're fun to go outside and play with. You can take them to the water. Of course, you got to be careful around here taking your dog to the river. There's reptiles in that river will eat your dog. I had a friend of mine that happened to. No doubt. It wasn't a chihuahua. It's a full-grown German shepherd. Alligator got him. Yep. South Mississippi, we got alligators and some big ones. And they will eat your dog. If you want a tourist down here, you want to play around the bayou, you throw the ball in the water, they will get your dog. Anyway, make a short story long, as I was doing. Here's the thing. She brings this dog home. I got me a lab. I got me a companion. We can go on walks. We can throw the ball. We can ride. Do all the fun outdoor stuff you would do with a lab. Now, I take him to the backyard like the second day we got him. He's all happy and excited. You know, he, I noticed he was a little bit on the lazy side to begin with, watching him. I said, I'll get him up to her. Up, perked up. We went out there, and I got me this nice ball or this tennis ball. I'm going to play ball with this dog. And, you know, they, you know, I was about 40 years old at that time. I pop, man, yeah, something like that. And I sure had plenty of energy. I'm throwing this ball with this dog. I'm going to throw the ball. I took the dog in the backyard. I throw the ball. Man, Coco, I actually call him Coco Mutt. It kind of sounds cool. His name was Coco when he got him. I don't know why, but we call him Coco Mutt. That's what I call him anyway. So I throw the ball. He goes and gets it. Oh, all the vigor that you would expect to have a Labrador Retriever. Go get that ball. Bring it back to me. I said, hey, good boy. Give him the treat. Took the ball back. You know, I'm not through playing. I think this dog, like my other lab that I had, would love this. Playing this for a probably 30 minutes till I was tired of throwing the ball. Now, what happened, folks, is I went and I threw that ball again across my yard. That's a good pace, about 50 feet or more away, 75 feet or something. Right? This dog, this is no lie. This is a true story. That dog looked at me, and he had to look on his face. I just went and got that damn ball, and you went and you threw it over there again. You can go get it yourself. And then he looked down, and he walked off. He was done playing ball. Well, needless to say, I didn't play fetch with him again. He didn't play that. It was not to happen. Funny thing is, my daughter, I would built this little, she wanted to train this dog. And he had already had some obedience training anyway. You could tell when we got him. Pretty sharp dog. He would do things like that. Well, I set up this conference course in the back. She could get that dog to do all kinds of stuff. But he wouldn't do it for me. No, get the ball yourself. The girl throws it, cool, but if you throw it, you lay your ass, go get it yourself. That's a real life story. There you go, Sparky, got your story. And good evening. <laughs>